Yo les gars, on se retrouve pour une nouvelle vidéo sur Onkai Starrell où on va voir Kapka et Black Swan. Qu'est-ce que Show TV va nous dire aujourd'hui sur ces deux personnages Peut-être qui invoquer Est-ce que la synergie va bien On va réagir à tout ça. Mais tout d'abord, on continue les une vidéo par jour durant tout le mois de janvier. Et je souhaite vous remercier pour le soutien que vous m'apportez en ce moment. Road, tous 500 abonnés avant, le mois de, avant la fin du mois de janvier. Et let's go pour la réaction alors, qu'est-ce qu'il va nous dire sur Kafka et Black Swan Kafka et Black Swan. Ok, Kafka, ah, il va faire comme la dernière fois. So il va présenter le ticket. Let's start with a bit of an overview of these two characters, okay. just to get you guys up to speed. So starting with Kafka, Kafka bien. she was our first five-star limited character that solely focused on DOT. Kafka, le personnage le plus incroyable au niveau du chara design, la personnalité. Voilà. Je le dis, je pose ça. Playstyle. Unlike our other 5 star limited nihility character, Silver Wolf, who was more of a damage support with a defense shred and other things, Kafka was ouais. surely one of the most hyped up character ever. She ouais, still holds ouais. the record for the best HSR character trailer. At least in my. Ça joue avec Jing Liu. Je pense. Mais je pense qu'en soi, Kafka a plus de. Elle a plus de soutien, les gens l'aiment plus. My opinion. Heck, she was one of the first characters we ever see in game. So surely she had to be unique. And she was. Unlike any other DOT character like Sampo or Luca, Kafka doesn't just apply debuff that then deal damage at the start of the enemy's turn. She can detonate any and every DOT in her own turn with her skill. She's able to detonate any oui. debuff. C'est ça, ça, c'est ça la rend bien. Elle va faire détonner les dots. Du coup, ça donne un côté spectacle aux dots. C'est pas juste des dégâts sur la durée, t'attends, tu vois pas de chiffres, c'est chiant. Là, ça fait exploser, c'est ça qui est bien. Kafka est irremplaçable. Enfin, je sais pas ce qu'il va dire après, mais pour moi, elle est remplaçable. She can detonate them all in her own turn, and then the enemy also takes damage in their own turn as well. So it's like two instances of damage. And trust me, if you have played Kafka, then you know how insane this ability is. Right. If you haven't played Kafka, before, then you're probably underestimating it. Having such a skill makes her combine both DOT playstyle and a standard crit playstyle. To explain this better, let me ask you a question. In your opinion, what differentiates a DOT playstyle to a standard crit playstyle? You can pause the video and share your answer. Le, les crits, pour moi, c'est ça fait des dégâts, ça donne envie, il y a des gros chiffres, t'as l'impression que ton perso il tape, c'est tous les mains scellés, c'est comme ça que je les vois, ils sont là en mode Ah, de se tomber <rire> Mais en soi, Kafka, vous imaginez pas le potentiel qu'il y a avec les dots pour la simplicité de build que c'est. Et je pense que Black Swan va le révéler ce potentiel. Answer. I do always reply to every comment. In my opinion, though, is the way the damage is dealt. You guys probably have heard of the terms like front loaded and back loaded damage. Ouais, voilà, and I think exactly of these ça. two play styles as these two terms. A front loaded damage back, is when a character deals most of his damage up front in the start of the rotation, or in Star Wars case, their turn. This is how a standard DPS character deals damage, and what most players like. They just love to see big damage numbers. Voilà. On the other hand, a back loaded damage <laughs> is when a character deals most of their damage. Bon, après, End of their rotation. This is how the DOT playstyle works. They did most of their damage at the enemy's turn, and it's probably the main issue why not many players like a DOT playstyle. Ouais, c'est pour ça. C'est pour ça que tout le monde critique Sampo, parce que Sampo c'est ça un peu. Bon après il fait pas trop de dégâts, mais mais c'est ça. Il brille pas directement. Du coup, on a l'impression qu'il fait pas de dégâts. Déjà qu'en plus il a un character design qui tire vers le bas. He finds it kind of boring and unpredictable, and it kind of is. You might just die before the enemy takes turn. Well, that's what a lot of players think anyway, and Kafka completely changes that. She allows the boring backloaded damage of a DOT playstyle to have a great frontloaded ouais, damage as well. With the detonation in her Kafka. skill, she gets you those big numbers in her own turn, up front, combining the both playstyles. With her, now a DOT team has both frontloaded and backloaded damage. Hey, ouais, not only increases the overall damage by. C'est pour ça que pour moi, les irremplaçable. A lot, but also makes the playstyle way more fun. She herself fully enhances the DOT playstyle. This is what I mean when I say her skill is really insane. And not only that, she also has her own debuffs like Shock. So she is not fully reliant on other characters to apply DOT. Though that does help greatly. She has massive AoE in her attacks like her ultimate and has follow up attacks through her talent. So she is a complete package. She is ouais, also pretty clairement. easy to build as all her debuffs have pretty high chance to proc. Ouais, so you don't need that. C'est l'avantage des ceux qui jouent sur les dots les gars. C'est facile à build. Vous mettez attaque vitesse, paf, terminé. 
much effect hit rate on her. She has self energy regeneration through her passives, which has become kind of necessary for characters who are not straight up hyper carries. So her kit is up to date, and since she is super unique, she is future proof as well. All these traits makes her a great character to have in your account. And also, if you are struggling with the new Sim Universe updates like the Storm Disaster or the newly added Golden Gears, then Nihility is one of, if not the best path to clear ah, the hardest difficulty. Ah, ouais? Attendez, ça pense, ça m'intéresse. Parce que si vous me suivez en stream, on y est souvent là-dedans. Et je me fais éteindre en ce moment avec l'allégresse, avec ma jingle où on chasse. Attendez, peut-être nilité, c'est ça la solution Je sais pas du tout si c'est fort, les gars. Mais on va tester ça. Difficulty, at least in my opinion. So I think that's also something to add. As Tarel will keep adding new stuff to the same universe, much, much harder challenges. So having a kind of a cheat code which gives you a better chance to clear ah ouais, those content is all nice. Ah ouais, un cheat code, carrément Ok, Black Swan. Qu'est-ce qu'il va nous dire sur Black Swan Attends, il veut faire une comparaison en fait. Swan. I took too much time explaining Kafka, but well, she is kind of insane. Anyways, ouais. just like I said that Kafka enhances the normal DOD playstyle and adds somewhat of a front-loaded damage to it, Black Swan on the other hand just straight up increases the damage of the standard DOD playstyle. And she does that with a new unique debuff called ouais, Sacrament. Ça. Is... Pour moi, Black Swan, c'est un peu un, sem un sampo. Amélioré, c'est un sampo 5 étoiles, c'est un sampo qui fait des dégâts, qui fait autre chose, qui baisse la def. Enfin, elle est plus forte, elle est vraiment plus forte, mais elle n'a pas ce côté unique de détonation des dots comme Kafka. Donc pour moi, elle est moins unique, mais pas moins cheaté, je pense. Kind of similar to the normal wind debuff like wind shear, as it also stacks like crazy, but has unusually high scaling than any other debuff. And she can apply this debuff through every part of her kit. Her base. N'hésitez pas à aller voir la vidéo qu'on a fait sur Kafka, euh, sur Kafka, sur Black Swan, si vous voulez voir l'intégralité de son kit. Thick, her skill, ultimate, or talent, everything. She herself can stack this debuff really high to get considerable damage. But through more DOT characters on the team, this becomes even better. Her talent makes it so that if there are other dots present on the target, those dots will also inflict sacrament to that enemy. So ah ouais, like bon, you get tons Kafka, of sacrament procs every enemy chauffe, turn. Hein. And also the more stacks of sacrament present on the enemy, the damage multiplier of sacrament will additionally increase. And on top of ça. that, depending on the number of stacks, sacrament will have additional effects, like hitting adjacent targets and ignoring defense and such. Speaking of which, her skill, which targets three enemies, also ah, reduces enemy fort. defense for three turns, which also enables her attaque to be as a standard damage as someone like Pella or Silverwolf. Her ultimate has another effect called up. Epiphany, which increases the damage taken by the enemy in their own turn, which is the standard dot damage. So she can buff your general dot characters in her own way. She has a lot of AoE in her skill and ultimate, which allows her to stack more and more sacrament on the enemy. Of course, a full analysis or guide Quiet. will be out right after the version live stream, so stay tuned for that. She also has self-buffing passives, where she ouais. gets her damage increased Cette based on her effect. C'est attaque, vitesse, application des effets. Pour Black Swan. Si vous avez ces trois stats. C'est bon, toujours facile à build, je trouve. Hit rate, so she's also self-sufficient. All this makes her another character with a full package. You don't miss out on ouais, anything. Clairement. With her insane DOT application and damage support like defense down, she's a perfect and probably the best. D Pour moi, Black Swan niveau Kara design, c'est top 3. Donc Kai. Et c'est pas troisième. <coughs> bon. La méta, la méta en a dit. But much, much better. She's definitely a character that you don't want to miss if you really love DOT playstyle. Not to mention she's hot as hell. So yeah, they both are an upgrade to your standard DOT teams, but both of them take a different approach to do that. Kafka is okay, like a new for any DOT team and enhances the overall playstyle, and Black Swan is the best DOT applicator for that standard ça, playstyle. But parfaite. which one is better? Do you need to have one to pull for the other? Are they even worth it? After a good briefing on their kit, let's start discussing mm -hmm. their value. Ok, ok, je sais pas trop où il va nous mener là, mais ok. La première question que je veux attaquer est Do Black Swan need Kafka Ou the other way around Now, in my opinion, ah, non. absolutely not. Ouais, ouais. Both are standalone characters that can... En fait, les deux vont se jouer ensemble, mais les deux sont indépendants. Si on mettait Black Swan et Sampo, ça va marcher. Ça va être moins fort. Si on mettait Kafka et Sampo, ça va marcher, mais ça va être moins fort. Si on mettait les deux, ça va être plus fort, ça va être incroyable. Mais elles sont quand même indépendantes. Elles ne sont pas liées l'une à l'autre. C'est pas, vous savez, vous savez pas Black Swan, oh, Kafka va être éclaté au sous-sol. Non. 
and benefit from each other, but by no means they need each other. From a simple mathematical Alors. perspective, a Black Swan Kafka team deals Alors, 15 attendez. to 18% more damage than a Black Swan Sampo team, and a Kafka ah ouais, Black Swan team pire. deals around 8 to 10% more damage than a Kafka Sampo team. So you can see here, the damage difference is not that big between Black Swan ah ouais, and Kafka and other si options, énorme. and it's even less for Kafka. Sure, you do get a bit of overall damage increase, but it's not so significant that justifies a must pull. Black Swan and Kafka ah ouais. does have similar needs as they want different dot characters in their teams and the more there are the more damage the team deals and you literally use the same team comms as kafka and just replace kafka with black swan it's similar to how kafka ouais. and ruan may synergy works kafka aye has aye less aye. teams aye aye aye. Ruan may, but you don't need ruan may to play kafka and it's the same thing with black swan I think that's much clear now. The next thing I want to discuss is are they even worth it? At this point, if you don't have a Kafka or haven't tried a DOT playstyle, should you give it a try? And I think you should. As a gacha game, the content will keep on changing with new. Ouais, c'est vrai. Sur Onkai Star Rail, le contenu, on sait pas ce que ça va être demain. Pour moi, ça va être de plus en plus dur, les gars. Ça va être de plus en plus dur. Donc, Kafka, c'est un style complémentaire. C'est un style de dot, c'est un style de jeu à part qui peut vous carrer. Regardez, en pure fiction, les gars. La nidité c'est très fort, les dots c'est très fort, si vous avez skip argentier et tout, elle va vous sauver. Et du coup, pour moi c'est important de diversifier ces teams à terme. Challenges and game modes, and the best way to tackle that is by constantly expanding your roster and playstyles. Both Kafka and Black Swan unlocks that new DOT playstyle, and they are needed in my opinion. Like I said earlier, with the new changes in the sim universe and with Pure Fiction right around the corner, they became right. even more valuable. You want consistent AoE damage to deal with Pure Fiction, and DOT playstyle is usually fantastic for AoE. And since there is no turn limit, you can easily auto that without any worry. And for the new Golden Gears, I already mentioned that Nahility is one of the ah, best paths to easily hein, clear hype, hein. those high levels. In most of turn-based gacha games, for most PvE content, if there is no turn limit, a DOT playstyle or a super tanky playstyle is always the best pick. Standard glass cannon hyper key teams are not that popular there. Combien they prefer those teams in Star Rail because of the turn limit, but otherwise, standard hyper carry is not that popular. In terms of builds as well, it's pretty easy to build a dot. Ah ouais, les gars, on here, I want to clear another misconception. C'est c'est super facile à build, les gars, les dots. Vous n'avez pas besoin du crit et du dégât crit, ces stats maudites qui veulent jamais arriver sur vos artefacts. About building a dot team, players think they are super resource heavy and is not worth it. And let me tell you, the only resource heavy stuff you need is level up materials like EXP books or trace level of stuff. Because when it comes to relics, you pretty much just throw all your leftover gear with no crit stats and just some attack and speed and right. you're good to go. Since dot does not crit, you don't have to fish for crit stats. There's no RNG about not critting like your Zilla ultimate or not being able to get 70% crit rate. En fait, ça me fait penser un peu pour les joueurs Kenshin, c'est un peu la team Nilou. C'est un peu la team Nilou, tu vois, c'est ça, c'est à part, c'est trop fort, ça fait des dégâts de zone. You just focus on the main stats and you're good to go. And are still competing in the highest floors of meta. Both Black Swan and Kafka are like pillars for that playstyle. And I think you should at least have all the playstyles covered, especially if you are an F2P and cannot hyper invest in characters like their Eidolon or Light Coons. In my opinion, they are definitely worth it. Alright, now the main question Who is the better pick? Like we've discussed the value. For more. Kafka a plus de value, clairement, parce qu'elle pourra toujours s'intégrer dans les teams à l'avenir DOT, alors que Black Swan, elle va être très forte et tout, mais en soi, si vraiment ils veulent aller dans une logique de power creep, ils peuvent power creep Black Swan, alors Kafka, elle est unique quand même. And saw that they are great on their own without needing the other. But which one should you get? Which one is going to give you most value? Is it the gun with sword combo red mommy or is it the hardest card throwing purple mommy? Which one is better? And it's a really tough question. Uh, I said that they both deux. have similar roles of increasing the overall damage of a dot team, but they fulfill that role in different ways. Black Swan increases damage by adding more dots with high multiplier, defense red, and damage. Ouais, vrai, fait tout ça, hein, Black Swan, hein. improves damage Finesse. by providing a much needed front load to the DOT playstyle. You can't go wrong with either of them. They both are great investments if you want to dip your toes in a new DOT playstyle. But if you can get only one, I recommend going for Kafka. She is a character that will provide much more value for a new player who is just starting to play DOT teams. Not just ouais. in terms of damage, but also in terms of fun. If you are someone ah ouais. who only ouais, plays vrai, the standard crit Après, playstyle, pas, testé... even with the high... On n'a pas testé Black Swan, ça se trouve elle sera super fun à jouer. Là, je pense qu'il s'emballe un peu, mais... 
Higher damage with Black Swan, you still might find that boring. You just want to ah see ouais? something similar to the playstyle you've been playing all this time. And Kafka can provide that. With her consistent front load, she combines both the DOT and crit playstyles. And if you're just starting something new, you should go for something that keeps you interested in that new stuff. And other factors as well, like who is more future proof. Well, they both are pretty ah, unique, so you won't see immediate power Toujours. creep, but Black Swan being a better but the standard DOT character will see competition down the line. And someday we might just get a better DOT character of the same element. Voilà. She is unique enough to not have to worry about that. Ouais, voilà, c'est ça, c'est du, du, du même élément, il a dit. Et ça, je pense qu'ils vont pas abuser. Ils vont pas ressortir un mec qui fait des dots en vent. For a long time. Pas, But Kafka is totally different. Her kid is so unique in what she does, and in such a way that even if another character with the same skill set arrives, they won't completely push away Kafka. They will just join Kafka and make her even better. And this just make her even more ouais. future proof. And with all this in mind, I think Kafka should be your character if you want to try the DOT playstyle. And of course, if you already have Kafka, then you don't really need this video. But for players like me who doesn't have Kafka, c'est ça. Moi j'ai Kafka les gars et Black Swan. On va foncer dessus. J'espère avoir énormément de luck. J'espère vous aussi. Should aim for her first. Conclusion, les personnages ont été saints. Overall, I think I've explained everything properly, and of course, me saying that Kafka is a better pull does not make Black Swan bad. Players are saying that she's ouais, just clairement. a better Sampo, but she provides much more than just win DOTs. She has damage boost, defense shred, and other things in her arsenal. She's not just a better Sampo. I just think, as a first step for the damage over time gang, Kafka is the better option. And of course, okay, 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 je comprends, je comprends. Donc lui il dit Kafka pour les nouveaux joueurs, je suis aussi d'accord, si vous avez aucun des deux, allez sur Kafka, de toute façon elle arrive en premier, donc au moins vous verrez ce qui se passe sur Kafka, et si vous avez assez pour Black Swan après, c'est super, mais n'oubliez pas, dans un coin de votre tête, il y a Sparkle, et Sparkle, est-ce que vous pouvez la skip Je sais pas, après ça dépend de vos objectifs, si la méta n'est pas votre problème, invoquez pour ce que vous voulez. Bon, sur ce, on va mettre un petit like les gars, c'était une bonne vidéo. <rire> ok, allez les gars, je vous dis à demain pour une nouvelle vidéo sur Okaïtarel. Merci pour votre soutien et peace